With uh, your latest film, Louder Than Bombs, can you tell us a little bit about what the narrative is in the film? Sure. Um, the film is set in New York and it's about a family and the mother passed away three years ago under slightly, how should I say, unclear circumstance. And the fa her husband and the two sons are left to try to try to deal with the questions of who was she and what happened to her. Uh, you co-wrote the script with uh, Eskil uh, Vogt, or Vogt, Vogt yeah. yes. Um, how uh, how did you get come up with the idea for the film? The thing is, we we uh, work with ideas that are sometimes of a more formal nature, concepts, scenes. We would like to use voiceover in a certain way, but then we usually start out and know we have a story, and when we when we get connected to some characters. And in this film, we wanted to explore sort of togetherness and separation in the modern family, and to see how sort of the painful yet necessary separation of, of these two sons from the father is, is happening in, in this particular setting. Uh, how did you prepare, prepare before you started shooting the film? I mean, we, I, I spent, since I'm not from America, I had to go to New York and do a lot of research. Uh, the film has a lot of scenes from high school, for example, and we were jokingly saying that, shit, you know, all we know about America we learned from The Simpsons. So we needed to go there and explore. So we were allowed to visit some high schools upstate New York, and I'm sure they found it kind of curious to have these two 40-year-old Norwegians sitting in the back of the class with notepads, you know. But it's kind of an anthropological experience to just try to, to um, yeah, explore America, you know, and see what our perspective on that was. Did it differ much from The Simpsons? From The Simpsons? Yeah, yes and no. We have a strip <laughs> mall, a convenience store, a little bit like Apu, you know, in The Simpsons. But no, I, I think we, uh, you know, I think our, our kind of approach and trajectory is to try to do something about America today. So we wanted to, to try to find a nuance in the specificity of the culture. This is your first uh, English language feature? Uh... First, first English language feature, but at the same time, I mean, I went to film school in, in London and stayed there for many years and did short films. And so, so it wasn't such a big leap in terms of the language. But I would say that just being on an American film set with uh, 14 trucks and three tents just for catering is kind of a different experience than shooting back in Oslo. So. Also, is there like a different difference directing Norwegian actors compared to like directing Isabel Hubert or uh, Gabriel Byrne? Um, not really. I think all actors have their individual needs and it's kind of my job to try to figure out what stimulates them or what, what they need in terms of support just to do the role. Um, I mean, I've worked in Norway a lot with what you would call sort of unprofessional um, actors. In my first film, Reprise, a lot of the boys that were playing in that were, were kind of young people who hadn't really been in front of the camera before. But, I mean, they still struggle with the same things. You know, it's about trying to make a scene function, trying to have a combination of confidence, yet take risks. And I feel that this is an ongoing process, even for sort of remarkably skilled actors like Gabriel Byrne and Isabella Pea, they are they are also searching for sort of a unique moment to let go rather than to have everything kind of, uh, you know, craft oriented. And I don't think that, that like craft is a good preparational tool, but in the moment the actor has to, to achieve a certain kind of presence. Uh, how did you cast the film? I mean, the thing about this is a lot of films are made these days in the international market uh, by casting actors that can bring money to the project as well. We wanted first and foremost, even though these actors are, are tremendously known, you know, they're, they're, they're famous, internationally famous people, I wanted the right people for the right roles. So we went after the actors we thought were the best and we had a financial structure set up so that you know, uh, how do we cast a family that looks like they are a family? And that was kind of a, a, an intricate thing, but I, I'm incredibly pleased. I, I can't imagine I'll ever have a better cast for any movie. I mean, the, these actors, Isabella Pair, Jesse, Gabriel Byrne, but, but also people like Dave Strathairn or Amy Ryan or Rachel Brosnahan are these incredible American actors that, you know, uh, some people might know from, from more supporting roles, but I think they're some of the best people around, really. Did you have any of the actors in mind when you wrote the script? Yeah, I must admit that we, we went through quite a few names and thought about it, but I know for someone like Gabriel Byrne came up very, very, um, quite early in the process because he's um, has got a great kind of ability for uh, what I would call contemplative acting. You know, he draws you in. He's a thinking person as well as being very emotionally uh, communicative. So, so I thought he was quite special. 
uh, it's a film about the loss of a loved one and yeah. how you cope with that loss. Um, it seems very personal. It, it, does uh, you or Eskel have like personal experience from lose, losing a loved one that's so close to you? I would I would say that our films are always inspired by personal experience, but maybe sometimes in indirect ways. Uh, I don't think that that any of our films are are um, directly related to a biographical story of our own life. But sure, I've I've lost people I'm, I'm I was close to, and uh, I think that. I'm interested in dealing with the idea of how memory and, and also the, the evolving identity of young people uh, happen during grief. <laughs> and how, in this case, for example, we follow a 15-year-old, the young brother in the family, uh, coping with the fact that he's left alone with the memories of the mother that they, in some ways, idealized because she was a famous war photographer, and kind of try to deal with what remains and, and questioning continually what her perspective on them were, trying to see it from the perspective of that absent one. We thought that was a kind of interesting starting point for a lot of the material and thematically that we were dealing with. You were here four, four years ago with Os sure. Oslo uh, August 31st and you won the Bronze Source. How does it feel being back again, competing I, for the Bronze Source once again? I, once I again? think that uh, it feels great being back and the funny thing is it's kind of a full cycle because in Stockholm at the film festival after the award ceremony uh, four years ago it's when I was introduced to Isabelle Huppert for the first time and I thought that you know it's kind of wonderful to be back here with a film where we collaborated so uh, you know it's, it's a real honor being back. That was actually my next question uh, okay, okay. that you met Isabelle Huppert for the first <laughs> yes. time so I wonder have you like noticed someone at this year's festival that's going to be in your next film? I haven't met any actors yet at this festival I think so far so interesting I, I, I better look around <laughs> huh no but I think I think there's great actors in Sweden and I also think that the, one of the wonderful things about this kind of international festival is obviously for filmmakers to meet other filmmakers and other actors I think that's that's a great thing and I think that that louder than bombs kind of proves that with the fact that Isabella pair who I met now is in I met here now is in the film so I felt also that the film is I mean they're a grieving family and the communication is not always there. Mm. Were you, were there any specific movies that you were inspired by that you watched and like picked parts from or like got ideas from? I, I think that generally I tend to be very curious about films that have good portraits of humans, you know. Um, what I guess is in terms of genre called drama. I, I never thought of that word until it suddenly became a bad word because no one wanted to pay for drama. That was like a dangerous thing. To me, I mean, I grew up with the Scandinavian films, you know. Uh, I remember watching Bill August films or uh, I, I remember um, early Roy Anderson, you know, uh, and Charlie Xistoud. And when I grew up, those were kind of great human por portrait movies and also Bergman, you know. I think there's a Scandinavian tradition of, of talking about family relationships and identity. Um, so, uh, so that's that's very inspiring. But there's also this kind of American tradition that you see in um, Woody Allen, even in his more dramatic films, not only his comedies, which are also great. Um, I think a film like Ordinary People, that kind of dealt with grief and memory, uh, uh, was kind of a, is, is an interesting film. But there was this kind of time where America made these dramatic films. You know, everyone's parents got divorced, and suddenly we saw Kramer versus Kramer or something. You know, like American movies were great at that kind of human beings here and now. Uh, and at the moment, I don't see that happening so much in, in American cinema, at least not the studio films. But, but that's kind of a, something we wanted to try to do with this film. Do you, do you think you managed to do that? Does your film like fill a void in American cinema? I, I don't know. I mean, that's up to others to say. It's hard to judge my work from the outside, to be honest. But I've seen that a lot of um, these more human-oriented stories are emigrating into TV shows where they can be interesting because you have a long time there to t tell characters over several seasons but I also think there's something about being in a cinema the big screen and how we can get very intimate with characters and I think I guess what what we're aiming at is to create very intimate individual portraits in a family set up against each other where they don't really communicate but we get a sense of each one of them individually that that was kind of the the thematic focus for this one uh, yesterday you were here uh, and had a face-to-face -face after screening, yeah. uh, Q&A, as yeah, they say yeah, in English, face-to-face yeah. is yeah. Stockholm. Yeah. 
Um, what, what were the reactions from the audience? And I, I thought it was interesting. It seemed like people, there was a good screening yesterday. Uh, it's important to emphasize also there was laughter. I mean, the, the film sounds very, it's about a dead mother, you know, it sounds very heavy. And it's got mel a very melancholic feel to it, I'm sure, but it also has comedic elements, you know, life is mixed. So I felt that there was a kind of an interesting approach to that. I think a lot of people were curious about the actors and the process of the actors because they carry this film. It's very much an actor's movie. Uh, that makes me very proud as I think that my main job is to present their work in, in hopefully the best possible way. Did the laughter come in the right places in the movie? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think, I think, so. I think it's, it's funny, you know, every, people think that you make a film and it, it is in one way but every audience has an individually slightly different vibe to it. Like you sit in a room and you watch the same movie and there's a different, different kind of rhythm to the humor, what people pick up on, and there could be cultural differences, but I felt that, that uh, people got the film. That was my impression. Now that you got a taste of making films in America, uh, yeah. is that something you're gonna, gonna keep doing or you're gonna go back to Norway? I think I, ideally, if I can choose, I'd love to do both. I am writing a Norwegian film now, which I'd love to do, uh, and I think that comes first, but uh, to work internationally would be fun again, yeah. I mean, there, there's so many great actors out there as well that work in English that I'd love to try to, to work with, so we'll see. You mentioned that you're writing on a screenplay, Norwegian screenplay. Yeah. Do you have any other future projects coming up? I, I don't know, we have many ideas. I sit with Eskil Fokt still, and we, we write things, and I still read scripts once in a while, but I find that I haven't really picked up anything I want to do. Uh, it's such a big, uh, it takes several years of your life to do a film and for some reason I've ended up doing my own material so it seems like that's the path for now. And uh, your collaboration with Eskil Vogt is that's gonna, is that gonna keep on going? I hope so. I'm, I mean I, I'm, I think that one of the great things I have in my life is that writing partnership with Eskil. He's, we're good friends, we've known each other for 20 years now since we were kind of film geeks in our teens going to the Cinematheque in Oslo. I mean, I, I think the main challenge for us is not our collaboration, which I think is great and works well, but I think it's that we end up spending too much time every day discussing movies and not doing work. That's, that's our main problem, I guess. You know, coming in in the morning, we end up sometimes spending an hour or two just discussing a book about a film director we read and some films by that person or you know like some new movie or some TV show that we're disappointed about or whatever you know and that takes away from our work so we, we try to keep focus. Still as in Sweden we call it a lux problem. Uh, I know I know. <laughs> it's and good, I, it's I, a good I, problem to have. <laughs> yeah it's a very it's great and it <laughs> makes these days that we spend making movies really pleasurable. It's great to work with friends and I, I, I speaking of friends I'm also I was a really great thing yesterday was that the cinematographer of Louder Than Bombs lives in Stockholm and is Swedish. He's called Jakob Ida. And he was at the screening yesterday with his family and many friends and that was kind of a celebration for, for him to have the film come home to Stockholm.